So welcome, ladies. Y'all ready? We ready. Let's get this ready. money game. Yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to Shut Up and Thrive, the podcast that will inspire you to live your best life. Three best friends who have been growing, motivating, and inspiring each other. I'm Vanilla. I bring the fun. And this is Claudia, the passionate one. And your girl, Nair, sprinkling in the creativity. When you listen to Shut Up and Thrive, it will remind you of your chats with your own BFFs. Join in every week as we discuss all the things that make you want to shut up and thrive. So, are you ready? Let's get into the conversation. Ooh, ooh. All right, guys. So what is the topic for today? Money, money, money. Money. <laughs> money. <laughs> now he's about to school us on some money. Oh, well, God. okay. Wait, wait, wait. Money. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> I do love money. Yes. But I am not a professional. I'm not going to say I know everything. I am learning and just sharing everything that I've learned, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. she's, you're more of a professional at it in, you know. Knowledgeable. Maybe, daily, yeah. yeah, daily lifestyle. You know, so you have a higher knowledge of what we do, but you teach us a lot. Thank you. I try, I try. So yes, today we're going to be talking about money. Um, After 20 so years of asking her to talk <laughs> about money. I... I girl, I know money lasts all the time. <laughs> I am always ready to talk about money. I mean, granted, I've been learning. So twenty years ago, I trust me, I did not have the knowledge that I have right now. So <laughs> can I get some grace there? Yes, grace. Thank you, thank you. Um, so just to kind of set the stage for our listeners, uh, we know that the topic of money is has a lot of parts to it. So we're hoping to kind of split this up and talk about money in different episodes. Not to say we're going to go every week until we finish, but we'll sprinkle them in here and there in between other topics. Yeah, that Let's sounds see. good. So today we're going to start with basic level. We're not going to really get into like the numbers when it comes to money. That will come in future episodes. Because we're all about thriving and going within, today we're going to focus on our money mindset. So you guys ready for that? Yes. You ready mm -hmm. to go deep and go inside and think about different things when it comes to money that maybe you haven't thought about before? Oh, we're always thinking about money. It's just we don't talk about it as often. So yeah, let's go in. <laughs> Let's start with, let's just erase our minds right now, right? Blank, blank slate. So you hear the word money. What comes to mind? What are the words and thoughts that come to mind? Money, money, money. <laughs> Freedom to do what I want. Mm, that's a good, good way to think about money. <laughs> money, we can travel. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Um, what else? Investing in the future? Okay. Anything mm -hmm. else besides travel, Vanilla? <laughs> I'm thinking you. money. The yeah. <laughs> more I have, the more I oh. want. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. No, not at all. No. So you, oh, is that you see? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're blank. Like you don't really, you don't really have thoughts. About uh, you know, it's good or bad. When I think about money, I was, you know, thinking about having it. It's like. Peaceful and calm, yeah, why not? That's money. Like okay. what I said, freedom, right? You know, mm -hmm. Freedom to me means let's travel somewhere and don't have to worry about anything. That's a good way to think about money. Okay, my work here is done. All right, ladies, let's wrap this Peace. up. <laughs> <laughs> See no. you next week. You okay. got more work than that, girlfriend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let's take it back. Okay, Take it back to you saying what when oh, you me, think okay, about okay. money. Yeah. Um, same thing as you guys. Um, I, I, because of I've done so much like looking into money and like how to have a lot of money and all that stuff, I feel like there's a lot of money out in the world. Oh, I know there's a lot of money out in the world and it's just waiting for me. Like, oh, wow. It's there oh, for me to go. And have. How do we get it? Right. So that's the only missing piece of the puzzle. 
is how to have all this money because there is a lot of money. Trust me, there's a lot of money. So that's how I feel like there is an abundance of money in the world and some of it is mine and it's waiting that's for me. That's good. I'm, I mean, I know there is, but I don't think it's in my grasp. Okay, that's, that's something to look and into. And I'm glad then. that you think it is, so I can't wait for you to. I think because of the research and like all the studying I've done, and the working I've, I've, with it. I've heard people and seen people who are just like us that have a lot of money. And I'm like, well, if they can have a lot of money, why can't I? What do you mean people just like us? Like, okay, when you hear people's stories, like people who come from nothing and then, you know, become rich or become famous or whatever, why why are they destined or why mm-hmm. were they able to achieve it and we're not? Yeah, that, that I ask myself all the time. And so like, then- if that is possible, why isn't it possible for me? That's how I look at it. It's very much possible for us. We just have to find the right way to get it. Right. And that's the we thing. We got work to do. <laughs> the way that I have to go about it is going to be different from that person. Mm-hmm. Even though we're people, right? Right. We all come from the same place. So let's take it back. Back, let's back, go back, back. Childhood. How was your experience like with money as a child? Zero. Okay. Experience, meaning had it? No, I didn't have Having it. it. Knowing about it, like just how was money, like what was money like to you as a child? Okay, so growing up really small, money was almost like it was forbidden for a child to have money. So if when they gave you a penny, it was like, wow, it was like amazing that you got a penny because it was money was like a big gift. You know what I mean? Not because my family didn't have money, but just because that was the mentality. Money is something that you have to work hard for. So since children don't work, you can't have any money. You can't ask for money. And if you do get some money, it's because you're going to go get something with it. Like here's five scoots, go buy a ice cream. It wasn't here's five cents, go save it in your piggy bank. There was none of that. Mm Mm-hmm. As I got older, um, a little bit older, but still, you know, young, it was money was looked at more like you're going to have to get a job if you want money, right? There's no such thing as allowance or, oh, if I do this, can I earn a dollar? There was no, you wouldn't, you didn't do anything to earn a, a dollar, especially you didn't clean your room to earn a dollar, wash mm-hmm. the dishes to earn 25 cents. That's non-existent. That didn't work. That was not it. And then when I got to the age that I could actually get a job, then it was like, okay, now you have a job, now you have some money, but you know you have to save it. You can't just go and buy what you want because money is not made to just buy the stuff you want. It's made to save. You pay your bills, yeah, but because you're young, you don't have bills, you have to save it. So I never really had that control over it. But then, you know, as I got even older, like graduating high school, maybe it was, okay, now you the money that you saved, you can use it to go buy your senior high school gown or your yearbook. So it was always been very a controlled thing. It was never something that I was taught to look at by myself and learn about. It was just, I was, I think I grew up, people telling me this is how money is dealt with. Yeah, no, totally. Because I think a lot of it is based on your culture, right? Mm -hmm. And the experiences that I'm sure I can speak for all of us, um, what you said is the experiences that we all had because we come from the same culture. But someone in a different part of a different race may have a different experience. Maybe they did have allowances. And I think the perspective that we're given of money, like money is this, money is that, is because that's how our parents Mm -hmm. viewed money. They didn't have to me, I know they didn't have money education. Like they came from a third world country where, you know, there's poverty everywhere. Granted, I feel like I never felt like I was poor. Um, I always was taken care of. I always had everything I needed, but I was mm-hmm. never like a child that would ask for things because I knew like the money that we had was to fulfill our needs. We weren't rich. So I knew that the money that, you know, my parents were making was to you know, for food, for housing, for clothes, Mm -hmm. for things that we needed. So I think for me as a child, money was just, you know, like you said, Vanille, something you have to work hard to get. So I never wanted to like 
be a needy child that says, oh, I need money for this, I need money for that. And because of that, I did grow up feeling like money was hard to get, and that you had to work hard for it. Of yeah. course, my views has, have changed now that I learn more. So I think us in our culture and you know, just minorities who come from like a, a third world country or a poor background, not poor, but, you know, less than, you know, the yeah, majority, yeah. you know, yeah. um, we don't come up with that mentality. Like our money work can work for us. And if we invest, like investing is something very new to me, but maybe if I had that knowledge and mentality in my teens and my early twenties, I would have already had my financial freedom right now, you know? Yep. I think investment is still, to my parents who are not even old, it's still non-existent. Like what? It still makes totally no sense. Right. Investment like, means you go under your mattress, maybe in an envelope, and you stick the money there. It's like that's another way of It's saving. saving. To them it's saving. It like ends at savings. There's yeah. nothing past savings. Exactly. How about you see? Well. Oh. I didn't have the education as well. So nobody sat down and told me this is how money works. Uh, I knew it was hard. It was earned. I know that you had to do something to earn what you have. Uh, never felt like it was a need. So it was never explained to me how the money was coming in. So because everything I asked, I got. I might have not got it that second, but I had it. You know, so I was an uh, only child. I come from a family who saw me as the spoiled one, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I was everybody's favorite growing up. Until this day, my cousins called me and be like, yeah, so the favorite one, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and um, so I, whatever I wanted, I had. I knew that they worked hard for it and I was very appreciative of everything I got. Um, so I wish I would have had the knowledge of how the money came. So I worked. Mm -hmm. I worked as a teen as well, but my money was for me to do what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to save nice. it. Did I want to spend it? Because my mother was just a provider. My mother was an, a single single parent, worked two jobs. I did my, my duties at home, like you guys say, chores. I was the only one. So my chores was my reward when I asked I wanted that new sneakers. Buy the new sneakers for Jordan is coming out. You know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. Showed her and, and told her what I wanted. And then we would just go to the store and she'd be like, go get your new jersey. I'm like, oh, the new Jordan? Yay! And I just bought it. So it was just never like, okay, so I worked this much hours and this is how much money I come. I just knew that she provided for me. And I knew that I had to do the same thing for my family as I got older. And unfortunately, it's how it is. My kid doesn't know what we can get into that after when my kids don't know what money is because I'm trying to teach them what money is, but they ask, I give. It's and yeah, I was going to say, I know it's a different topic, but you being yeah. raised like that, it's so easy for you to do that now to your son. You know what I yes. mean? Like, oh, just go get your your Jordans because, you know, right. that's it, what it, was it, told to you. It tends to feel in that row, but the difference about it is I'm trying to educate him on how to invest in money and things like that because I'm learning the investment stuff too. So when he gets older... Or well, they get older, they know what to do. Even though I'm providing, I'm teaching them at the same time. This is how I got the money, you know. This is how much I'm getting paid, and this is how much I can't spend this week because of this and this and that. So it, it was fairly non-existence of knowledge of it, of money when I was younger, and that was it. Yeah. So I think it's good that you kind of brought up our children because it kind of leads to that too. Now, so we think about how we were raised and how what money was like as a child do we feel like we're repeating those same kind of lessons or behaviors with our kids now i mean i can I say for me not to i um, i always try me, to be different than what i was thought with my so what's what's one thing you you would say you're doing different from um, what was done with you for example he recently got his first job and so he opens, you know, he has his debit card, he deposits its money, and I'm not controlling over it. I'm not tell. yes, I would definitely tell him, you know, you should save some of that money, at least 30% or whatever you should save. But he's like, oh, it's okay. I just have these list of things I want. I'm just going to go and get it. And I just let him do it. I think if he was getting out of hand crazy, like, dude, you spent every check you've gotten so far, then I would like maybe step in more. <laughs> But yeah, um, I 
I guess I'm letting him have a sense that you worked hard for it. So it's your money to do what you want to do with. I'm going to say for me, it's a little bit of both. Like I feel like, okay, me and my husband, because obviously I have my husband here too. I feel like sometimes we are kind of repeating the lessons that or behaviors we had because Mm -hmm. we'll be like, if you guys do whatever you need to do, what you're supposed to do, like if you do your chores, whatever you ask us, we'll buy you. So I feel like that's kind of repeating my behaviors. Like as long as I did everything I was supposed to do and, you know, I'd get whatever I needed or wanted. So we do have that piece of it, but I'm also trying to be cautious and like really educating them. Like this is like, they're always asking about our mortgage. I don't know why, but <laughs> they're interested Maybe to know. Maybe they hear you guys talking about it a lot. Maybe right? like, they're like, how much, how much does the house cost? Like, what is Aww. the mortgage? Like, what is a mortgage? So I like had to tell them like, we bought the house for this much. Um, and like, I, I'll show them the bill. Like, here's the mortgage bill. And they're like, oh my God, you have to you have that much? <laughs> Do you have that money? I'm like, yes, and we have to pay it every month. So I explain like a mortgage and this is how much is owed on the mortgage. So they understand that. And ever since they were young, ever since like they were little and they would get money for like Christmas and birthdays, my thing with them is you have to save 50% of that money. <laughs> So I'm a little more extreme. And it's funny because, you know, I have three kids and each of them are different. You can tell which one is the spender, which one is the saver. My youngest, he'll just, he he literally will just save and will buy things like here and there. He'll save like 100% of his birthday money because right now there's nothing that he wants. Um, Where my oldest, she'll literally, like if you let her, she'll spend every single penny. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> well, I, it, I learned with her because obviously she's the oldest. I was like, wait a minute, this girl is literally planning out to the penny every every money that she got. So no, mm-hmm. so I, I I would take it from them because I'm their bank. Um, and they're always like, oh, you keep saying you you have money for us. How much money do you have in the bank for us? Like, they're <laughs> yeah. so curious. To yeah. Know. Like, none of my kids work yet, but like you said, the like once they get a job, definitely open up that account and then teach them how to manage it because when I started working my mom took me to open an account like we had an account together but it was just like okay this is the bank you used to cash your check it wasn't like you have to save some of it I just intuitively would save Mm -hmm. because I knew like saving was important I knew that so I would just save and then you know keep some money for myself and like I saved quite a bit Yeah, when they get to that age, it's important to do that. But another thing that, you know, none of us really had education on was investing. So that's something that I want to start to introduce to the kids. I remember in college, we had a session where he, remember he told us, Every time you get paid, like always invest like $100. It's the first person to really make me think about money. Me too, like invest $100. So I knew when I got a job, I had to have a 401k. I had to have a retirement account because, you know, my my um, takeaway from his meeting was that's the money you're going to need for when you're old and when you're retired. So like in my early years, like early 20s, my idea of saving was for retirement. I didn't think of like saving for like investing, investing for the now it was to more buy in- something bigger. Right. Mm-hmm. It was more for investing for when I retire. So that's what my mentality of investing was is for retirement. Like you can, mm-hmm. you, of course you're going to invest for retirement, but you can invest to make money right now, like to, for your money to work for you right now. Yeah. That's what I want to learn. Cause the same thing like you is till now saving for 1k is for when I'm no longer working and I've invested that money so I want to learn I want to know how to you know like be like those people you said they're just like us and they have all this money because (laughs) they're doing something different you know they're investing it differently cool Cool. I know we can talk about so much. It goes into yeah, but so when many I different go, directions, right? We're not going into that right now because that's they the whole, I know. <laughs> So let's just continue with our money mindset. So I know we've all heard money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. Do you believe that? Do you think so? Do you think evil comes with money? No, evil comes with the person. <laughs> I don't think money is the root of all uh, Yeah, evil. I'm sorry. If you're an evil That's person, That's a totally different critical. topic. Yeah. Right? No. Evil, it evils with you. If, you're, if your chakras, like Vanilla would say, isn't aligned, you're a mess. 
Money what if we replace that things? word with another word? Money is the root that? of all not evil problems, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. then what kind of problems? Not looking at it. So I agree with Claudia. I don't think it's money itself that brings the problems or brings the evil. It's the people. Um, I think money is a tool, right? It's a resource. It's something we use to get what we want. But some people don't think of it that way. Like you hear about those people who no matter how much money they make, they're never happy. They want more. They want more. They want more. They want more. That's a problem because you're not viewing it that way. You're thinking money is going to bring you joy. Money is going to bring you happiness. So going back to going within and thriving, it, it starts from within. I think people become addicted to money, just like you can be mm -hmm. addicted to drugs. You can be addicted to mm -hmm. a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not the money itself. It's the... Money. Yeah, and maybe that's where money, more money, free. more more money, more problems come from. Because like when you do have a lot of money, if you have a habit of buying big, big expensive cars, you're gonna buy more expensive cars, right? Or you know anything you really love, the more money you have, the more you're gonna buy. It could be drugs or more problems. It could be women or men, more problems. So yeah, but some people they they. It's not even that. It's not even to buy things. It's they feel like they just never have enough, right? Like I'm, it could, yeah. Some people just may, to, you know, just to stick it in the account and see some it grow, people grow, grow. Need, have that addiction. That, like I need this mm -hmm. money because I More might money. need it. I I something might happen or it might be taken away from me or you know like mm -hmm. it could be that kind of mentality too. Yeah. So it brings so money is not evil. It's just pretty much your inner thoughts of how you think of money and the feelings that you're trying to fill with the money you have or don't have. And if you don't have a balance in either or, you're either going to sway to one side or the other. Because there are people who get money and they have, their surroundings are negative. So their surroundings are greed and the people around them is they got it. So I can ask and they know that this person's nice and like, I'm, I can put myself in that category, but I've learned a lot over the years that like, I got to say no, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So some people will say yes and yes and yes, and then will drain you from all of your worth that you have. So that for them will make them change their mentality about money and be like, money's evil because now I got none of it. And all of these people, I don't have any of these people in my life because all they did was use me. So money can be evil to somebody who is like, you know, grounded and get abused by others. But at the same time is you got to work on that mentality of how you see money. Because I think everybody sees money differently and including us three. And we have similarities of how because how we, we work with our money, how we see it. But we all have different perspective of how that money is to be handled. And that's why I wanted to start with this topic when it comes to money is your mindset. Because before you can get into like how to manage my debt, how do I make more money, how do I um, invest, you need to get right with your mind, right, get right with your soul yeah. and your spirit to really understand, okay, where do my money beliefs come from? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, how did I grow up with money? What do I feel about money now? Do I have an end goal with my money goals? Uh, what am I going to do with my money? Like, really just understand your whys and understand how you view money because you got to have that positive mindset first and before you start to really dig deep into mm -hmm. how do I either accumulate or invest or whatever your goals are. Like you have to get this part of it right. Even though we might not have all our whys yet answered, and but you still have a sense of what money means to you, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to say what yours is, Naya? What or maybe you have already? Like your sense of money in general. Yeah, I mean, I've already said it. Like for me, money is a tool. Money is a like a resource. Mm -hmm. Just like like technology is a resource for me to do whatever I need to do. People are resources for me to educate myself. Books are resources. Money is a resource. It's a resource because when I sit down and think about what my ultimate goals are and what do I want to achieve and what I want to be doing, 
money is a big part of that, you know? Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm going to start thinking of it more like, not that I don't, I know it's a resource, but I don't really look at it like that. I'm more like, oh, money is an energy that you attract. Like I've never, I've never went needing money. I've never Mm -hmm. had to be like, oh, please lend me some money. You know, I've never Mm -hmm. had the need to feel like I don't have money. One, maybe because I have my family that always supported me, right? Two, I always work because I know you have to work to make money. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have a friendly or a positive relationship where they're thinking of it. It really is like an energy. If you think that you need money, you know you need money, you attract money to yourself, Mm -hmm. right? Um, People, if you... Yeah. And if you have friends who need money and they want to borrow some money, I'm like, sure, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's going to go to you. It's going to come back to me because you're going, when you're able to pay me back, you'll pay me back. And I know this people that's like, oh no, money, I don't borrow money to, you should not lend Mm -hmm. money to nobody. That's the relationship that they have with money. Mm -hmm. But me, it's always been a, it's a flowing energy. You let it go. It will come back the same. I've, thank God. I always thank God. I've never needed money to get with the things I want either I want bigger and better things but maybe when I start craving them a lot more I will check the money I need to get those but right mm-hmm. now I'm like oh I'm good I work I pay my bills and I save my money because even though I don't have a lot of money I do save my money I am a good saver and I think mm-hmm. that's something that my parent taught me that when you have money you have to save it you can't just be getting your nails done because you got money today or buying new sneakers because you got money. That's nope. I don't need it. I don't deserve that sneaker just because I worked hard for that money. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, I see some positive and some, like you said, like you're content with where you are in terms of like the money that you have and you no, never not, really, no, no, not very. No. I, okay. Yeah. I'm not content, but like you're in a position where you see money in a positive way. And I, I feel that way too, where money is an energy. It flows in and out. Like every time, like I've never, thank God as well, been in a position where I was like, so like, I have no money. I don't know how I'm going to eat. I don't know. You know, I'm going to be put Mm -hmm. on the street. Like, thank God I've never, ever been in that situation, but I've always thought money was an energy. Um, If, if I have this huge bill, I'm like, whatever, I'll pay it. Money's going to come to me. It is what it mm-hmm. is. So it's always been an in and out. But I had to kind of shift that perspective because if you stay there, then you're always going to just, you know, you're going to be in that yeah, spot. Gonna stay you're going to be, yeah. right. You're going to, you're going to be taken care of. You're going to be happy. But like you said, those bigger and better goals that you want can only be achieved, unfortunately, in the world that we live in with money. Like we can't travel mm-hmm. for free. We can't have nice houses, you know, with big backyards for free. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> we we have to have huge amounts of money for those things. So it's when you start to kind of focus your, not to say living in the future, but know your whys for having money. Yeah. Like what is your why? Like I'm not trying to attract money just because I want to say I'm rich because I want all this money because money does nothing for me unless I put it to work, unless I'm doing the things I want to do. So yeah, you kind of, you, it's good to have that starting mentality where you feel like mon- money is a positive thing where it flows, it comes in and out, but that in and out, what is that in and out? It's coming from where it's going, where you have to assign that money to where you want it to go to where it's coming from. And that's where you start to learn, okay, how can I increase my income? How, you know, how can I manage this money so it's going to the right places that's going to make me more money? My relationship with money is in the borderline of half, both of what you both said, you know, like I do feel like energy brings money because again, we don't have a have to have that dire need for it. You know what I'm saying? So there are people out there that do that. Whoever's listening at the moment, they have had that dire need. Maybe they can, you know, talk about or think about how they got out of it and, you know, give us some more um, intention on that. Like, cause I really don't know what it is to have a dire need. I know what it is to have a need as being a single parent. Um, when, before I married my husband, one child, 
always had the support of my family. So they, they were always there. But if I was on loan, that would have been a problem for me. That would have been a dire need for me, but I had the support. So it wasn't then there. And now I have a great husband who knows how to work for his money because he knows I'm a spender. <laughs> Poor guy. So my relationship with money nice right now. Balance there. <laughs> yeah, it's a good balance because I'll spend and he'll save. I'll have, you know, because I do the daily stuff, like the house things. I He doesn't have to worry about those. He worries about bringing in the money and saving it so when we need it, we have it. I worry about paying off what we have so we can continue having what we have. Um, that works for us. But it is uh, a really, I, I don't have a hate relationship with money. I just don't like it when it leaves my account, but I like to use it. So it. I feel like I give, it comes back. Like I do do a lot of good as well. So that energy, I put it out there. It's like whatever I have, someone else don't have. If I give it, it definitely will be returned back to me because this is how the universe works. You put it out, it comes back in. And it's mm -hmm. good intention. It's mm -hmm. not for I need points. I need to put it on social media. I need to do this. I need to do that. It's just for my heart. I do it from the bottom of my heart that it's, if I have it, I can give it to you. That's cool. my relationship with money. You'll share it. I have me to too. I think if I, had, I think if I had a lot of money, I would sh share it. Yeah, because like Definitely. even now that I don't have a lot of money, when that I'm not saying I'm sharing it, but like if I see my account growing, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna grab it and pay my car loan for the whole year because it's there. I rather not see it sitting there. Well, you know, Claudia enjoys it, like she was saying, watch it grow and grow and grow there, and maybe still pay, you know, the monthly thing. I'm one to be like, oh, just grab mm -hmm. it all. Do that big down payment. Just do that. Take care of that thing for now. And that makes that makes me happy. But I want to change a little. I want to have the drive, drive to let it see it grow and grow and see maybe how that makes me feel. Interesting. Hmm. I, I, I'm trying to think how I feel when my money goes in and out. Well, when you I, see it accumulate, how does that make you feel? I like it, but because mm -hmm. I'm so focused on like investing now, I, I like to see it grow in my investments. You allocate when, it right away. Let's say that five, let's say you, your mother gives you $2,000 because it's yeah. your birthday. Yeah. What do you say? Oh, shoot. What, what do you do How with that I, money? What do I do with that money? Okay. So when I get a large sum of money, I always take a little bit to treat myself. <laughs> nice. And it's not a lot, maybe like 10% or less, like $2,000, 200 or less, not even just to do something mm -hmm. with that money, either buy myself something or go out to dinner, dinner with the lady, go out to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to treat myself a little tiny bit, nothing crazy. And then I now will, in, if I don't need to, like, if my savings is good, then I'll just invest it because it makes I know that money is going to do more investment than savings account. Yeah, like I like to see my money grow, but like I said, I'm a spender. So um, it, it it makes me feel like, oh, snaps, I didn't spend that much because the money's growing. So it gives me a little, ooh, good girl. Like mm -hmm. you're actually listening to your inner thoughts because when I spend sometimes, I necessity first, always, you know, and then I love to take care of myself and do fun things for me and my family and, and other people. I, I care for others. So those things are always something I do. So when I actually see the bank grow, I go, oh, I, did I do too many or did I do too little? Like, what didn't I do this time? Because the money's still there. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, so was girl, I you need a budget then. If you're yeah. wondering. I, I'm, so bad, I'm so bad with budgets. I have to, like, go back to my statements and just, like, oh, okay, yeah, I did do that. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, snap, yeah, I shouldn't so, have done that. So, like, budgeting is... An upcoming, yeah, an upcoming we'll be, I always <laughs> need to learn how to budget because I spend, and I th that's my mentality. I spend, I'm okay with it because I know... It's always going to come back. I work. Mm -hmm. And there are other things that I do that money come back into the account. So mm -hmm. that if I see money in there, it's good. I do pay like I like you do. Like I have. All right. I have a bill that I could get rid of. All right. Do I do it now or do I risk keeping it there and spending on someone else? I'll do like you. I'll pay it now. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. You know what I'm saying? But do you it's, also uh, it's a be little like bit of both? I haven't been shopping in two weeks, so I spent, I saved $200. So this week I'm going to save 
spend 400 because I haven't gone shopping in a few weeks. I think you have a little bit of that in you. You'd be like, I haven't been shopping in a while, so I'm going to go and spurge now. You know I do. Just, I yeah. definitely <laughs> I've no, heard you say that. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I'm not gonna lie. I do. Like if I go to a store and I do, I I shop a lot. Um, I do. I love stores. Sometimes I don't shop. It's like a therapy for me. Like mm-hmm. shopping malls, being around things that I I I can adore. Be like, oh yeah, it's therapy for me. So if I have money and I want to spend it on something, I'm not gonna second guess it a lot. I'm gonna be like. Yeah, I got it. So I'm going to buy it. You know, it's for me. It's mine. Oh, I need it. You know what I'm saying? So I always have a reason for buying it, but I probably have I that's that material or shirt or whatever I'm buying for literally months. You know, like I'm looking for specific things. I've been going to the store and I'm like, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Because I do a lot of Sure. Window, window shopping. Window shopping. I love it. And then they'd be like, oh, they, this is what's in style. Word. I like that. I might get it at some point. You know, so it might not be that gratification that day, but it's something I've been wanting for a long time. And I finally said, all right, it's good for me to have it now. So well, that's good. Ready. I mean, you've you've identified yourself as a spender, but you have a healthy way of spending. Some people, they, they are like, okay, I got money in my hand. I'm going to go buy those nice sneakers. They don't even think about that hospital bill or, right. you know, other things that they I need underwear. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to see that anyway. So yeah. You know, don't yeah, be forget. yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to be as healthy as I can. Like I said, that knowledge of educating me on money and saving wasn't there when I was young. So it's everything I've learned while growing up and never had the necessary of like, I'm in dire need of money. So that also helps me on the spending because I don't really need need the money as like, oh my God, I have to pay this or else we're going to be out on the street because my responsibilities have been paid before I spend it on me. You know, so if my car loan's not paid, my loan's not paid, my mortgage's not paid, I'm not spending that money until that's paid. And then whatever else I have left is either I save, which I'm terrible at, I said, my husband's the one who saves, so I spend it. So he saves, I spend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he should learn, then, then he should be the one to learn about investing. And Well, he kind of is. He's yeah, he, investing. Remember, we're saving, we're not in, yeah, there's the pay your bills. Because they pay their, they pay their bills, they no, invest. No, I mean, like, we God have two houses. Invested. That's an investment, too. Yeah, not that's a just... big investment. But we're saying, yeah. like, investment as if you have a those stocks and you just but that's oh, yeah. another money, form of investment put money into it you know like is instead of for example doing my nails every other week for $50 I'll say I'll do my nail once a month and then the other $50 I'm going to put it in that stock right but it's also that an investment it's also an investment if she takes that extra money and pays down her mortgage because now her debts are less so that's going to make yeah, yeah. No, no assets doubt. more. So investment yeah. come in many forms. Claudia is investing in real estate. Rest investing in um, stocks is another way. There's so many different ways to invest. So yeah. you can pay down your loans. That's investing too because you're minimizing your debt. Yeah. So I have uh, been doing that because, you know, buying the houses in your um, your credit is always something that we, we, we have to always try to keep up, mm-hmm. you know, growing up, you know, you, you use your credit. It, nobody teaches us about credit. Like you That's have a higher thing. credit line. That's another subject. Credit's so clear that thing. up, um, got the houses that we want. And now we're uh, working on investing in stocks as well. My husband started doing some stock interest and he's learning about it mm-hmm. because he's the saver. Like we said, like he's right. the one who wants That's what to. I- that's what I was just saying. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm exactly. glad he's learning about it. And yeah, the yeah. best and the best thing to do is to diversify investments. Have a little bit of this, have a little bit of that. So not everything is in, let's say, the stock market. Because what happens? Okay, now the stock okay, we're, crashes, we're getting we're going back. Okay, we're going to we yeah, we're going money, into investing. That's another okay. talk. That's another talk. Rewind, rewind. Okay. Let's move into our quiz. quiz. So this is a very fun quiz, but it's also going to be very eye-opening. So we'll leave a link for our listeners so they can take this quiz as well because it's super fun and super quick. Um, So the ladies and I, we've taken 
the quiz. I know my results, obviously, because I'm the one who administered this quiz, but <laughs> they don't know their results yet. So basically, it's called the Common Money Beliefs Quiz. And uh, you answer 12 questions. Uh, you pick A, B, C, or D. And then at the end, you tally up how many of each letter you got. And then based on that, you are classified into one of the birds. So the first bird is avoiding the avoiding ostrich. And your money persona is avoidance. The second bird is the strut, strutting peacock. And your money persona is status. The next bird is the stashing crow. And your money persona is worship. And then the last one is the wary owl. And your money persona is vigilance. Ooh. So. Which one am I? So, okay, Claudia, you want to start with you? So Claudia's first. Um, Claudia had a very interesting stats. So she scored, she tied with A and B. So she's a combination of two birds. Mm -hmm. um, so A is the avoiding ostrich and B is the strut and peacock. <laughs> so Claudia is literally from one end of the spectrum to the to next. The and she's like pretty equal in both. That was A and B? She's mm -hmm. A and B. She scored four for each. Mm -hmm. So the avoiding ostrich, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this bird. So you're influenced by the belief that money is complicated and that you are undeserving of it. Rather than tackling money issues head on, you tend to let them pile up like your unopened bills and bank statements. You're the least likely of all the personas to ask for a raise or talk to your partner or family about money. The good news, avoiding ostriches are good at managing money if they can just get past their fear. Read all your statements. Play with your play with new budgeting apps and don't be afraid to ask for help. Stress free, free finance is within reach. So, of course, you're not going to be 100 percent the definition, but mm -hmm. some of the things they talk about in it could pertain to you. Definitely. So, th so this is someone who just doesn't like to deal with money, just sweeps it under the rug, you know, doesn't want to talk about it, like that just acts like it doesn't exist. Kind of what okay. I was when I was like uh, younger. As I'm getting yeah. older, I'm away from that now. So you're working on it, which is yeah. Good. That's now that probably four. <laughs> right. Peacock. So you also have a little bit of this strut and peacock persona. So you're influenced by the belief that your self worth and happiness are directly tied to the kind of lifestyle you lead. Your biggest challenge is to overcome the buy it now, figure it out later mentality. The reality is that you likely aren't as financially secure as your lifestyle suggests. You're the most likely of all the personas to get drawn into get rich quick schemes. The good news is Strut and Peacocks have an advantage over all of the other personas. They're good at talking to other pe others openly about money, talk to family and friends or a financial planner and get a budgeting game plan together. So it seems like both of these birds <laughs> need to get on their budgeting game. Budgeting game. Yes. And that's, that's part of where I'm, I'm starting to go. So yeah, it makes, it makes good. sense. Yeah. From one end to the other for me. Yeah. Cool. Now V. Now you're actually. N. <laughs> I know I'll tell you mine after, but you, you scored high on the avoiding ostrich. So mm -hmm. you have, you have a lot of that avoidance personality. So the first um, description that I read where... Um, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, wrote it down a little me. bit complicated. Um, towards the end of the description of it, I was like, okay, yeah, okay, that makes sense. But the beginning, I was like, undeserving and complicated. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. really, but I think I've definitely moved down to the more like, I would never ask for a raise. Like I have no clue yeah. how to begin to ask for a raise mm -hmm. or even to talk about money is not a big thing for me. So that so, makes but, sense to us the end. Yeah. And you said like investing, like that's something that you're not as educated on. So that can fall into like that money is complicated belief too, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So me, I scored big on the stashing crow. <laughs> Oh, C or D? <laughs> oh, <That's> C. 
<laughs> so shocking. I didn't think I would be a stashing kind of person, but let's let's read what that is. Read that. I, I got five. What did I get? Yeah, I got five on that one. So the stashing crow, you're influenced by the belief that your money, that money is important and scarce, meaning you can never have enough of it to afford all the things you want in life. There's a thrill to making money and an even bigger thrill to stockpiling it. You're a geek for coupons and promotional deals. Of all the personas, you're the least likely to spend money on yourself. The good news, stashing crows are smart with money. What they need most is to relax. Recognize that money is a balance of saving and spending mm -hmm. and that it's healthy to enjoy your money from time to time. Um, so I think I was a little bit more like this and I, and I am trying to move away from like, remember how I said the way I think about money is that there's a lot of it out there and it's waiting for me. That's a new concept for me because, mm -hmm. you know, growing up how we did money is something you work for it. You have it. It's not like it works for you. Um, so I think deep down inside, this is where my like money mentality comes from. Yeah, and then, I scored a four on that too. So I felt that yeah, towards the end. I a felt little that bit of it. Yeah. So I'm going to read the last one. None of us really scored big. We all only had one for this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all of us had one mm -hmm. for this one. So this is the wary owl. And so you're influenced by the belief that the potential loss of a risk will always outweigh the potential gains. This translates into a distrust of investment pro products, and even financial institutions. Of all the personas, you're the most vulnerable to the negative effects of inflation because holding on to your money seems safer to you than investing it. The, the good news is the wary owls have a solid budgeting skills and rarely overspend. Their biggest hurdle is seeking out financial guidance and considering new products with an open mind. Meeting with your credit union is a great start. So these are people who, although they might be good with money, they just don't want to let it go. Right. Not risk takers, huh? Yeah. 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 We're a bunch of risk takers. So that was cool. That was very interesting. That was nice. Peacock, I only had two, but what is? What That's the a name? spender. Spender. Okay, no. Yeah. See, I'm not but, a spender. Like, you want a lavish lifestyle. See, C got four on there. I got three. I got three on that one. I want it, but it's reasonable. Too. I know there's certain things that I, I, I can't be in that lifestyle, but I will be. I will be. <laughs> that's that's where it's at. I will I don't want to be, but I will be. I so will. you do no, want to be. I'm saying I can't right now. Like today, I can't be there because they're, I'm she still knows working. Her timeline. She knows but her it's timeline. coming. I'm going to be at that lifestyle. That make it known. Yes, sister. Speak it into existence. <laughs> we go live in that lifestyle. Money's just going to keep coming. That's right. Just keep coming, baby. What are you going to do with it? Oh, just keep spending. <laughs> keep shopping. Live. You're going to keep yes. shopping. You know, you're going to be spending. Or you're going to buy shopping. houses and cars. And buy more Jordan. houses. Mm. Afford um, I would love to do that, though. I would more love problems. to do affordable housing. <laughs> No, it's it's good. I think we need affordable housing and and for other people. So I would do that. Oh, I would be you that like, type of person. Yeah, to be I would invest in giving back houses. to. Yeah, I girl. Would if I'm investing in buying houses, it's so I can put that rent all the way up there. I'm just kidding. What if the money keeps you, coming you in? You gotta you know the, the place, Yeah, the yeah. To do that. Once you get yourself to that place where the money you have is already good then you can mm -hmm. look into like giving back and what can you do to help others right yeah i'm not money hungry like that i want it for me i want to be money hungry i guess that's what the quiz, the quiz was really good I, it yeah definitely it did um eye opening quit. yeah okay guys so to wrap wrap us up unless you guys have anything else no money we could talk about money forever so we need oh, to and we up. will we will so this was just to get us started get our feet wet we'll we'll get into more like specific things like budgeting savings investing debt credit credit like all those things um but we just gotta we gotta ease our way into it but i do want to wrap up with some ways to help us create an abundant mindset when it comes to money because ultimately when like my personality, how it came out that I 
tend to have a scarce mentality. In order for you to grow your income and to make more money and have more money, you have to really have that abundant mindset. So I came up with three things that we can do to help us kind of create that abundant mindset. So y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the first thing that I thought of was for us to be grateful for the process that we've already made, even if it's small. So I know, Vanilla, you have a practice where you like to um, show gratitude or, or um, express your gratitude. Maybe you can start incorporating that, expressing your gratitude for the positive things that you've had with money or experiences and relationship that you have with money. Um, with anything, we know that gratitude is key, right? So just being grateful for the things that we have, the knowledge that we have, the progress that we made to really level set where we are and be thankful for the things that we have. I think I think I definitely have included that in my process already to the mm -hmm. extent that it's one of the reasons why I'm like, oh, you, you have don't money. have a drive, a you drive have to money push problems. More. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that's the first step. So you're you're good. You're there already. Um, the second thing is to set an abundant mindset as an intention, for instance, before you meditate or before you go to sleep. So if you don't already have that money is abundant, money is is, is mine, it's out there waiting for me, you know, I'm going to um, what's the word? I'm going to attract this money, I'm going to you know, continue to increase my money. If you don't have all those things already in your mind, when you meditate, when you, you know, if you pray, when you do that, to really like kind of set that intention before you go into like those states and things like that. So set it as an intention and make sure that, you know, your thoughts around money are positive because you can't think of it in a negative way. Like when you get a bill, you know, I understand mm -hmm. I have this bill. It's going to be taken care of. I have the skills to make the money to pay this bill or whatever the case. Or may even be. practice thinking about it more. Right. In my case, I don't really think right. about if, it. I just mm -hmm. know I work. Yeah. So at the end of the month, it's going to come out of my account. But it's I don't be think about it. So think about it more. Think about money more. Right. Attracting more money. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you even <laughs> have a money goal? No. Okay, so right there. <laughs> start if, with the goal. <laughs> start with your money goal, right? What mm -hmm. is your money goal? Yep. And Thank that's you. part of the second one. And then lastly, you guys know I love my research. So for those of us that feel like there's um, more things that we can learn when it comes to money and attracting money is to do your research. One thing that I learned that I said in the beginning was there's a lot of money out there. And there is a ton of money. Like if you research the industry, let's say the industry that you work in, just research like how much money that industry brings each year. And then understand, okay, I'm making this much of this amount of money in my industry, but this industry makes, let's say a hundred billion dollars a year. Like, am I getting a chunk of that? Am That's I getting funny, especially for you working for the bank, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> right. So I've been able to see bank accounts that you would not even believe. Yeah, you get both. That's the both world. You get to see the bank accounts of people like you, and then you Real also get people. to see what the bank itself. Oh, yeah. I mean, we all can see. Makes. You can Google. Mm -hmm. You can Google how much the bank made. And, you know, every quarter, um, public companies are required to release their financial statements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can Google how much money these companies are making, but just your industry itself, you know what I mean? Like the beauty industry, for instance, brings in a ton of money. So that could be something that you can maybe have a little side hustle in that. Like or let's Google how to open a bank. You to switch. Right. Three of us, let's Owning open, a bank. Let's own a bank. Let's well, do that. What's What's the profit margins for that? So becoming educated on the amount of money that is out there and the potential that you have is good. And I want to leave you guys with a book because you know me and my books. Mm -hmm. So uh, the book is named Sapiens. I'm trying to find the author for you. And it, it will be pinned a, down as well. Yes. In our profile. 
So it's not a um, takeaway for me unless I recommend the book. <laughs> so his name is Yuval Noah Harari. So Harari is his last name. So this book is thick, honey. She a thick one. Ooh. It's a big ass book. 443 pages. Jesus. That's but thick. can you auto it? <laughs> yes, that's how I quote unquote read it. Auto. Um, it's basically a history of the human race. From the beginning, beginning of Homo sapiens, all the way to like the author's thoughts on, you know, the future and artificial intelligence, intelligence and things like that. But the reason why I bring it up is because there is a part of that book, a section in that book where he talks about money, like the inceptions of money, like back into like the barter system. Remember, like there was when there was no money and people be like, I'll give you this cow if you give me, you know, this mm-hmm. rice, Some whatever. Sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Trade. And then he just kind of takes you through the evolution of money to what money really is and how money has its worth. And, you know, to me, it was very interesting because, you know, you, you think, OK, money is this piece of paper or this coin. But like, how does it get its value? And how do we know that a dollar is what it is? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he mm-hmm. kind of makes you understand what gives money its value. And I guess I'll give you a little spoiler alert. It's tied to technology. So a money is printed, right? And it's and they print money and set its value based on the the um, what what am I trying to say? Like the resources that the the country or whatever has. The faith that technology is going to be invented to to like match up to that value. So the value of money is dependent on technology and the advancement of technology. So that's why like, it's so interesting. Already, Even it's you, already there. Or is that him? No, that that's the future. to come. Technology to, to come. To come, okay. So like there's money in this world, but we know that like the government prints money. So I believe you're, it. Yeah, you're printing about right. money. You're printing money. There's more out there in circulation. Shouldn't that decrease the value of money? But we we know there's inflation. Things are getting more expensive. So how is money? You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. he obviously does but, a way better I job mean, than he does. Sorry. No, like right now, to me, money is printed depending on how much gold exists in a specific um, country, you know? Isn't it how money's printed now, for example? I'm um, not too sure. Gold, I'm not sure how gold ties into that, but gold is is a commodity. It's not like, it's like a thing that you own. When did that you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, that's fine. But when yeah, did that And he stop? talks about that. He talks about that where gold was like the thing to have. Like that's how you determine mm-hmm. your worth. It didn't stop. Like gold is still out there, but I think that's- as... As the world is like evolving, mm-hmm. technology is is becoming. So I think it's moving from thing. these natural resources into technology. Right, right. Okay, right. so I'm out. I always so, think natural resource. You know, I always think gold is it is is it. But I don't know for some reason I don't know where I got this. Is many many years ago. I think I read something that said, for example, before you can go ahead and print this amount x amount of money. You have to have that weight in something else, in a resource, and that could in be gold true. or, I don't know, diamonds, maybe, I don't yeah. know, in yeah, a natural that could resource. Be true. That could be true. Again, this You always open so up big. cans of worms and makes me want to go searching and researching and stuff. Hey, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So I read this book a while back. I probably could use a, a refresher. Re- refresher, but it's 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 really... Definitely send me the, the correct book. spelling so I can... Sapiens is the name of the book, but I I do recommend audiobook because whew, it is a big one. No, I have that audio app you sent. So the library one, I think it is. Is that where you listen to it? Yeah, yeah, that's where I listen okay. to my books. Yeah, because yeah. you can you can use Audible, but I think there's a charge. Mm. But the one that I use, um, it's called Libby, and as long as you have a library, Libby, card, yep, Libby. Yeah. As long as you have a, you just link your library card to it, and you can borrow books against your library card. Yeah, we did this like five years ago. I think you recommended it five years. I ago. always <laughs> recommend it. I'm always putting it out there. I mean, for yep. people who always say, "Oh, I want to get more into reading," this is a perfect way because you're, you're like, you're "Girl, listening. nobody reads anymore." We listen in your car, we listen. in your 
Yahoo list. Yeah. I don't remember the last time I read. But it's quiet, book. so it's like I don't have time for that. <laughs> you can't. No. You can't do no, that no, when I'm you're the, driving. I do. I don't read. Stuff. I just do audio. I do. I mean, I have books, but it's I pick it up and then I stop. So if mm-hmm. I have an audio. I can. I'm always in the car. I'm running. Oh, up, I've been up reading and down. because I joined book clubs now. I think I'm Bougie. <laughs> yeah, look at you. <laughs> I have. Yep. Yeah. My kids fun. be it's like, fun. "It's funny though, because my kids are like, oh, what are we gonna listen to now?'" Well, good. No, that's good. You joined yeah. them. That's good. Nice. Oh, they're always in the car with me, so they're like, "Are you gonna oh, okay. put that book on? Or are you gonna do? Are you gonna do the the podcast that mm-hmm. you like?" Oh, I, we haven't heard him in a long time. Can you put him? Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> that's good. That is so nice. weird. But yeah. But yeah, uh, guys, that's the way to go. That's um, everyone's uh, homework is to at least look into that book because it's very Everybody's interesting. But thriving moment. So, what's your takeaway? You know, you? That, yeah, me, mine was definitely to start incorporating, um, thinking of money as the resource, more a little bit less than it's just an energy that flows, which it is, but think of it as the resource that you need. So there's got to be things for you to get it. And the other one I think was setting into my intention to attract them or to want to talk about it, to think that I'm deserving of it, you know? Yeah. Nice. See? Uh, create a budget. <laughs> Eee, mm-hmm. We haven't even talked. No, wait till our budget. <laughs> That's so good. Well, I'm, That's don't wait, about. but... You guys, you guys yeah, led it start. into the, into yeah, the test, especially you know, where you are right else, now. So it just what they invest, yeah, definitely, definitely want to already it. need to. That should have been done with your whoever helped you bought houses your, and stuff. Should have been done. Yeah, your investment, your real estate is a business. So you know, businesses, even if they make billions of dollars a year, they have budgets. Trust I me. I know. No, it doesn't I matter know. how much money you have, you always need a budget. I got work. I got work to be doing when it comes to the finance stuff. It's just you know we're move, fixing the houses, we're moving in. We got to look at once we do our taxes and look into everything that we spent, all the receipts and things like that. Then we can be we can create that the end of the year folder. Well, yeah, that folder to start to be like all right, this is a year that we've had this house and this is where we started and this is where we need to go for the next five years to make mm-hmm. sure we have the next property we want. Mm-hmm. Oh, and me too. The, another thing that I'm going to wake up to is, like I said, I do save, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, but I'm saving it. What's happening to it? So I want to be more aware of what's happening to the money that you're supposed to be saving. Like it's yeah, you're investing yeah. money and in making sure I yeah. save it. I'm saving it smart rather than just putting it away. Right. Under your mattress. No, I don't do mattress. I do like, here, agency, put this in a stock, do whatever you want type of thing, monthly yeah, yeah. or weekly. But really Yeah, even if you on. trust someone to manage your investments, you should still know what they're investing in. Like, mm-hmm. you may not be actually. You should get a report. I mean, you yeah, get statements, but do you look at them? Do you understand yeah. them? Oh, yeah, sign in to online, do everything so it's easy. But I probably logged in the day I created the account and never logged back in again. Oh, oh, that's terrible. You got to go back You in. ostrich, you. I mean, huh? That was that complicated yeah. understanding. That was the, the avoiding ostrich. Ooh, and one day we should have All a right, podcast guys. on how to ask for a raise. But it's, yeah, I wanna, the, my thing is I want to get past that. I don't want to ask you for a raise. I just want to make my money myself and just make it a lot. And I don't want to ask you for a raise. I just want to do things that make money. Get it. Yeah. So career and how to advance your career, how to make more money. That's part of the whole what career, girl. I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> but there's our, like, some of our I listeners. Don't dream of labor. <laughs> I know. Work. That comes up every day on my Every feet. time I every hear day. that, I think of Vanilla. Because Vanilla yes. says it every time. I don't want to work. What's your what, um, what's, what's your dream your job, job, darling? I've told you. I don't have a dream job. I don't dream of <laughs> labor. Dream of labor. <laughs> I don't want to do nothing. I never seen that again, but it was like, I don't want to do nothing. Right? Oh, the girl that? manifesting? Yeah. 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 <laughs> she goes outside again. I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> I think it was something like that. Oh, man. Do our character. So funny. But yeah, money is going to be a forever conversation and a relationship. And remember, it's going to be different. 
it's an energy. Think of it positive and give. When you give, money does come back to you. It really like does. It's like when you, you invest, money comes back to you, right? When you invest yeah, yeah. safely. So when you give from your heart, it comes back to you again. Yep. My oh. son knows I'm not afraid to spend or give him money. Yeah. Hi, buddy. Dang, his voice got back <laughs> deep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we, awesome. we spend and we save and we try to educate ourselves on the next step and keep moving forward. And it's, I don't see us in the future. But like, remember when we had this conversation about how do we get, was it residual money coming in? And now we, we have a stop. Income. Yeah. Passive income, baby. No, now Passive some of us income. have. Not Well, I need to understand. Maybe I do have. No, I don't. Residuals when you have a business and you... Money comes it because people. Coming. It comes in even. It's not trading your time. Oh, I do have it. Yeah. My husband's my yeah. residual income. Like, oh. <laughs> he gives me money <laughs> to pay bills that I've already paying all my life. It must be nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you um, manifested I think I need a couple a of those. <laughs> you know, you need, your, you need your seven sources of income, so you need. <laughs> You need like what five or six of them to get to that number. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Six hundred thousand dollars in investment. Ooh. Ooh, that is my budget. Putting it out there, huh? Yes, that's ma'am. But she goes, "That's my budget." You don't even have a budget, girl. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, that's my budget now. I'm starting it right there. Yeah. you need to go <laughs> understand what that is. I mean, I should know real quick, maybe. What? She says that's my budget, but I know that's not the word she was looking for. It's not her budget. Oh, because budget. That what means... is that? What is that? Your investment? that is my investment. So my budget has to be that. I need to yeah. get that money and pay it off. <laughs> oh, that's your goal. Yes, that's gonna be my end goal. Money, whatever I paid for this for these two houses, I need to have that in the bank. It's more and than half double. a million dollars. And <laughs> double. take the money and I... run. Double it up, man. Like, I want that money in that account for me to be like, I did that. My husband and I did that. Mostly my baby. He's so hardworking. He's working right now. I got to go, guys. <laughs> he's like, where, he's texting me like, where are you? Like, you're supposed to be cleaning the apartment. I'm like, ah, yeah, I'll be right there. Does well, he not know what you do? 600000 That was so going to me. This, but that's how I think, too. That would have to include a cleaning crew. It, it would... To, girl, you gotta cut. Yeah, you I don't want to do nothing. Yeah, you I have, don't want to do nothing. So that's why it's that's you have a budget. So you know, can I afford cleaning crew? Can I afford a property manager? Like these are things when you own property that you. Yep. How much work do you want to take on? If V, you want to own property, but you don't want to physically do the work. You can hey, can you budget it. someone into it? Definitely. It's going to eat at your profits, but are you okay with your profits being less? Again, these are things you got to look at yeah. when you look when you look at what type of investments you want to do. Just like investing in stock, are you going to manage your own stocks? It's going to be cheaper than paying somebody to manage your stocks. Right now, you're paying yeah. somebody to manage your stocks. You may not know it, but your stock portfolio has an expense ratio. They're taking a cut every time they manage your account. So, you know, it's all a give and take and what you're willing to give, what you're willing to deal with yeah money 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 but yeah guys all this stuff we need to discuss in future episodes so um to our listeners we hope you enjoyed today's podcast um if you want to take the quiz we'll leave the link for you guys we'll leave the information on the book but let us know if you want to hear more we have a lot more topics that we can discuss around the idea of money making money saving money and all that stuff so yeah, ladies, any yeah. final thoughts before we go? That's all good. We love you all. Go out there and get some money. <laughs> Thank you for listening and Thanks we'll listening. catch you on the yeah. next one. Bye. Bye. See ya.